that's certainly it's certainly the sort of character that we don't see from a lot of female protagonists on screen. And why do you think that is? Why do you think that we see all of these anti-heroes from a male perspective who do are very flawed, who make choices that you cringe at as they're making them? We don't see that quite as much from women on screen. I don't know. I, I don't know why that is. I always am looking to kind of shatter a fantasy of, you know, what we kind of... So you set out to ruin kindergarten teachers for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, this is sort of a little off the wall, but this is something I was thinking about. Uh, I wonder if people, like, don't want their mothers to see women, because of course women are their mothers, as, as broken and shattered and flawed and confused as we actually are. I wonder if it has something to do with that, I don't know. Um, and maybe, or maybe it's that there haven't been that many women really, well, I have so much to say about this and I don't wanna go like totally off the, the train of thought, but I think if, I think just because something is written or directed by a woman doesn't mean that it's necessarily a feminine expression because we live in a masculine world and we don't have a lot of models for that. But I wonder if you give, if, if, if women are at the helm of something and they do give themselves the space to express something real and human, well then it won't be a fantasy of what a woman is, it'll be a very, very complicated version of what a woman is. And maybe, okay, so this woman is like way out there and she does horrible things. I mean, she really does. I don't think she's like your every woman. Um, but she, but in some ways she is. I think what, what works about the movie is that she could be our friend. She could be our sister, our, you know, our neighbor. Um, until she really collapses. Now this movie has been playing on Netflix for a few weeks now. What, well I guess the first, what is the response at school pickup time? <laughs> because I can imagine that there are other parents and teachers at your kids' schools who have now seen this movie and are thinking, Don't touch my child. <laughs> <laughs> no play dates for you. I don't know, I'm like, I have to say, this is a different kind of an answer to your question, but this was made for no money, absolutely nothing, in 22 days in New York City. We took it to Sundance, we like hoofed it around, we sold the movie. I have done that before. I know what that is, I know what that means, I know what kind of audience that will create. Netflix is an absolute and total game changer. I'm not allowed to say, but they told me how many people had seen the movie in the first 10 days, and I was- It's just between us. <laughs> I was like, actually, absolutely astonished. And the reason I say that is because this is a complicated, difficult movie. I know that. This is a movie that requires care and thinking. This is a movie that requires your attention. And I think for a really long time, people have not had access to that unless they live in big cities and had an art house theater in their town. And why? It's so condescending to the rest of America. Like, why can't you also have access at the same time as everyone else does to something that is actually gonna offer you the truth, actually ask you to think for yourself? I think especially at this moment, when both sides agree that we're being lied to. People are hungry for the truth, and they're hungry for being asked to think about complicated things and make their own decisions. So I'm like, so people stop me all the time. And I, I expect that for a movie like The Dark Knight, in some ways even for something like Crazy Heart, which has a, you know, music and a sweeping love story, but for something like this to have that kind of an audience, I just feel so grateful. I'm so glad that the like model is changing. I think it's right, right on. 